a pleasant day, STEM learners. This is Sir Peter, your statistics and probability teacher. For today's discussion, let's talk about the last lesson, part weeks two to three, the functional method of hypothesis testing with unknown sigma. So at the end of this video lesson, you should be able to identify the appropriate form of test statistic when the population variance is assumed to be known and solve problems involving tests of hypotheses on the population mean using the traditional method. So here are the steps in solving. Number one, we have to formulate the null and the alternative hypothesis. Number two, we need to determine the type of test, whether it's left-tailed, right-tailed, or two-tailed, the significance level, and the critical values. Number three, we have to compute for the test statistics, whether it's C or D. But in this example, we will use the t-test. State the decision rule, make the decision on the null hypothesis, and lastly, we write the conclusion based on the claim. So let's have this problem. The dean believes that the engineering graduates can get a score more than 90 in the board exam. A random sample of 12 graduates has been found to have an average score of 92.2 with a sample standard deviation of 7.9 in the board exam. So we use the 0 0.01 level of significance or a 99% um, significance level to see if the claim of the dean is true. So obviously, step one, the alternative hypothesis is the average score of the engineering graduates in the board exam is more than 90. So that is our claim. So we use greater than because of the word more than here, which makes it directional. Okay, next. We can now write the null hypothesis. The average score of the engineering graduates in the board exam is not more than 90. So a not more than symbol would mean less than or equal to 90. Step number two, obviously this is a right tail test or one tail test. The significance level is 0 0.01, uh, that's our alpha, the critical values using the degrees of freedom, so we will use a t-test, so we will use df11. And you should get your t-tables because the t-table gives us a value um, for 11 and then it intersects with 0 0.01, one tail. So the um, critical value is positive 2.718. Okay, so that is the exact value of the t critical value. Step three, we have to compute for the t test statistic. So that is x bar minus mu sub zero over the sample standard deviation over the square root of n. So that's 92.2 minus 90 over 7.9 over the square root of 12. This is how you put it when you have old calculators, but if you have new calculators, you can directly input these values. So our answer is 0 0.96. So this P computed value will be now compared to the critical value. For our decision rule, we use the right tail test. When the T computed value is greater than or equal to the positive T critical, we reject the null hypothesis. But otherwise, we do not reject it. So let us compare. Is 0 0.96 less than 2.718? Of course, it is a false statement because it is greater than. So the correct decision making is fail to reject or do not reject the null hypothesis. Since age sub zero was not rejected, therefore we will use the null hypothesis as the conclusion. So therefore, the claim of the dean is false. The average score of the engineering graduates in the board exam is not more than 90. So we have disproved the claim of the dean. So that ends my discussion for um, the traditional method when sigma is 
unknown. So again, this is Sir Peter, your statistics and probability teacher.